You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. My first guest this morning is Seamus Whitney from Whitney Career Guidance. Earlier this week, thousands of Leaving Cert students across County Wexford received their results and they're currently awaiting their third level CAO offers. The reason I've asked you to come in this morning, Seamus, is to provide impartial advice to students and their parents in advance of making one of the most important decisions of their life. Seamus, you might start by telling me a bit about your own background, please. I guess I got into career guidance in a roundabout way. Um, Before I set up the business, I was working in human resources, so I was very involved there in recruitment, interviewing, hiring engineers, scientists, IT people. So I got to know about the careers that were out there, the kind of people that we were looking for. And that put me in a good position then, I guess, to advise people, you know, how they might go about qualifying as those and where the actual jobs were. Okay, so when was Whitney Career Guidance set up? I set it up in 1998 as as Pinnacle Career Services. It was part of a suite of products that I offered then. You know, I did management training, going back into companies. I worked a bit with the schools and the enterprise programs and I did the career guidance. But the career guidance was a bit of a passion and I always wanted to develop that. I'm I'm probably full time in it now. Tell me what exactly is career guidance and how does it work? Well, it's a process of really helping the person uh, tap into, you know, those interests, uh, get themselves aligned with their core interests. So I take them through a series of questionnaires and assessments designed to help them see what it's like to work in the various areas, uh, see if they like it. That's most important. You know, they must be interested, I think, in order to to like it uh, or in order to succeed in it. And then it's a process of, okay, if you want to be a nurse, an engineer, a doctor, an IT professional, well, how are you going to go about that? So I look at all the points, requirements, the qualifications, the colleges, universities. So it's uh, quite extensive. Isn't this the role of the second level education system in this country? I know that every school in the country has a career guidance counsellor in place. So why do people end up coming to yourself? Well, it's probably time. I mean, people typically, if they come to me for an assessment, uh, I could spend anything up to four hours. And, you know, even in some cases, they might come back to me the following year for a top up. So it's quite an exhaustive process for somebody who doesn't know or who has broad interests and and high points and can't decide which way to go. It's a daunting decision for an 18 year old to make. You know, it could affect them for the rest of their lives. So. Um, as I said, I, I can spend anything from three to six hours with the student on an individu- an individual assessment. And I think in schools, the guidance counsellor have got so much else on in terms of, you know, counselling young people. That's a big part of the role that they just physically don't have the time to stretch to, 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 to that kind of a time commitment. Now, if we're to focus specifically on those that have received their Leaving Cert results earlier this week, um, I'd like you to provide advice to, I suppose, firstly, the students themselves and secondly, to their parents well you know your points now are your points you can't really change that they've gone to Galway now up to the CEO and the, the computer up there is busy you know computing all the offers which uh, are going to be available from 6 a.m. on um, Monday morning so um, I, I guess you've one of three likely scenarios on Monday one is you're going to be offered your dream choice the college and the course that you were hoping for, and fair play, that's brilliant. Uh, Away you go, the best to look at that. The second option is that you don't get your first choice, and you make it as um, a lower choice from your CAO application. And you may not have thought that one out that well, you may not be so sure, that's where you need to be most careful about. Okay? And parents also, if your child hasn't received their first offer, you need to talk to them, you need to make sure that, you know, before they embark on this uh, uh, new course offer to this new college, you must be sure that that's a course that they want to do and it's leading to a career and a job that, you know, they're going to be happy in. So the, the, the third thing that may happen is you may get no offer and there could be a number of reasons for that. Like one is this is the first year that the bonus points came in for honours maths. So students all over the country who were sitting honours maths, uh, regardless of what grade they got, they've been awarded uh, 25 extra points and that's been responsible for pushing the points up even more this year. So, number one is you may not have the points, so there's nothing you can really do, you you know, um, only maybe reset and try for more points next year. Uh, Some people may have the points, didn't get the offer, 
they may not have made the grade in a particular uh, subject. For example, if you want to do engineering at university, you must have a C3 minimum in honours maths. If you don't have the C3, although you had the points, you don't get the offer. And the good news there is, you know, you can repeat that subject alone next year. And once you pass the subject next year, well, then you qualify for that uh, offer again. Um, and the last option, or again, check the subject requirements for the course. You may have the point. So, you know, some courses require a language, a third language, French or German. You mightn't have studied a language or leaving certain levels. So that's, again, going to rule you out. Seamus, I'd like to drill down a little bit deeper into a few of those now, if we could. I suppose, firstly, let's look at the second option that we spoke about there, which was those that have got offers, but not for their first preference, for maybe a second or a third or a fourth preference. Um, how seriously did they need to consider that? You just need to be extremely careful here, because my experience would be that a high percentage of students that come to me that have dropped out of college, uh, dropped out because... They chose uh, a poor um, secondary offer on, from their CEO. It didn't work out. It didn't suit them. It was too mathematical. It was too technical. The college wasn't right. And uh, you need to be very, very careful. And, you know, parents ask the question of your uh, sons or daughters, you know, are you happy to go to that college? Are you happy to take on that course um, content? And especially make sure, you know, do the best you can to make sure that they're not just going to that course because their friends are going to that college. They may already have signed up for their accommodation in UL. All the buddies are going and they'll take the wrong course in UL just to be with them. But it can be a disaster. Another thing I've seen down the years as well um, is that, you know, students tend to, in some cases, fill out this form on their own. They don't give their parents access to it. So they're making decisions themselves. It's a, it's a very, very significant decision. The cost of an honours degree in Ireland now is €40,000 for the four years. So they're making that €40,000 decision themselves. Um, you know, are you happy that they're investing in the right course for their future? Are you happy that you're investing your 30 or 40 grand into a course, you know, whereby they're going to get uh, the, the kickstart that they need in life from? So be very, very careful here. There are no published figures released from the universities or ITs across the country in relation to dropouts. What are your own thoughts on that? Well, I, I think that's a, a big scandal. Like, the dropout rates are high. We've all heard horror stories of, you know, courses with more than 50% dropping out by Christmas. And in particular, in particular in the past, you know, courses with a high technical content. The colleges don't advertise it. They don't say there's a lot of maths in this. They don't say there's a lot of physics in this. And students uh, struggle from the get go so um it's a it, it's a national scandal um we all hear you know the government time and time again saying that we need more students in science we need more science or students in etc cetera, etc cetera. but there's nobody out there saying you know the amount of money that it's costing parents um to put students into courses who subsequently drop out uh, there's an emotional cost as well Apart from, you know, the repeat fees, etc., that are being wasted on uh, these courses, uh, the emotional cost is high. Students that drop out, uh, drop in confidence. And that can affect them for the rest of their life. I now want to talk to you, Seamus, in relation to students that would ha receive no offer whatsoever on Monday from yeah. the colleges yeah. and the relevant options available to them at this stage. Yeah. Um, because, look, I suppose one of the areas of concern really would be that, you know, students aren't forced into doing something that they don't want to do themselves and look a parent will have their best interests at heart uh, what advice would you give both the parent and student in that regard I take your time you know I work a lot with adults I get adults coming to me for career guidance at at 48 you know 38 and uh, no problem when they see these students coming out of leaving cert at 17 you know they just think they're kids and uh, what they say to them is just take your time to get it right. Some students are in a hurry to say, I'm I'm old now, I'm 18 and I need to get to college. But, you know, you know, Carl, you know, as well as I do, we've been around the block that, you know, they're, they're still are very young. They're making a major decision. So I'd say, take your time, get it right. Take a year out, do a fee tech course if you can get on one now. Um, repeat if you feel you have the motivation, you know, to get more points if you feel you've let yourself down. Um, but you need to get cracking on this now because fee tech courses are filling up quickly and uh, schools have a very limited policy with regard to 
with regard to taking students back for a repeat. So um, you need to be talking to your school pretty soon. Of course, there's an option there as well, you know, to go, in, go directly into the workforce. Um, you'd hear people saying as well, it's the school of life and it's very true. You know, it's great experience. Um, if they're not ready for college now, go and get that job, maybe save some money, get some experience. You know, next year um, you may be much clearer about, you know, what direction you, you do or don't want to go. Unfortunately, with the with the situation the country is in, apprenticeships are not widely available anymore. And that, you know, believe it or not, used to take about 10,000 school leavers each year. So that's a kind of a door that's being closed. And a lot of those students who are practical and hands-on don't have that opportunity. So, you know, they're going to find work maybe in manufacturing, retail, um, some get work in call centres, that type of area. Uh, but take your time. Um, take the year out take two years out if you need to um, and when you're clear about what you want to do you know again I often say I love working with uh, adults colleges love mature students because they're good learners uh, they work hard and you know you're going to be much more effective in college when you're sure uh, about why you're there well, Seamus, you certainly provided our listeners with some very valuable nuggets of advice. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming in this morning, and I wish you continued success with Whitney Career Guidance. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.